Well, welcome to Max Car Models today. Um, today I've got a couple of models to photograph. I've got the F50, Revel F50 that I produced, which I'm not particularly happy with. And this little bad boy, which is the Revel TIE Fighter. Came out beautiful, lovely little model. So here's my setup. I'm using two lights today and a light cube and my camera. I've also got a little digital camera. Now you notice I've got the cover over the front at the moment because I've got a black background in there. And what I don't want to do is put too much dust onto the black background. Stuff you're going to need today if you're going to do this. A pair of white gloves. Really handy, you don't want to get fingerprints on, on your model. We also have one of these blusher brushes. Makeup brush, whatever you want to call it. A pair of broad nose tweezers and a toothpick. And that's basically the kit. Oh, of course, and let's not forget the camera. You see here, I haven't got a lot of high-end kit. Just got a simple camera, does pictures very well. I've also got my little digital compact, which I'm going to use. And this is basically the setup I'm going to use. Now you can use other lights. I've got proper lights here, but the setup I've got here with the light cube cost me about £60 all in. I've got a third light, but I'm not using that today because I want to put some get some shadow lines down on the bottom of the model to hide some of the blemishes that I've got on one of them. Um, 150 watt daylight bulbs in there. I wouldn't advise using halogens to be honest because they're not very good and they're very very hot and the colour of the light is not brilliant. So that's the setup. Let's get ready and uh, move on to the next video which will be prepping your model. Welcome back to part two in this tutorial. Um, right, I'm going to prepare the model for photographing now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush or brush, blusher brush even, and I'm going to get rid of all the dust on the model. I've got my white gloves on. I don't want fingerprints on my model because they will show up. And what I'm doing, you see, I'm gently working down from the model, taking all the dust off. Now the reason I'm doing this is because when you take a photograph of your model that white dust under these, these studio type lights will just ping out and glare at you and it will make the model look pretty horrible actually. So there you go, really simple, prepared the model. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to frame the model for the picture. In this model I'm going to take a couple of photographs, one with the stand on and one with the stand off. And see what it looks like. You can just play around, don't worry about it. He's having fun. This is another tip tip. You don't want to get grease on here because any grease you get on there ends up on your model. Keep the little plastic sleeve thing it comes in, stops the grease getting onto your model. Okay, now I've prepared the model. It's sitting in my light cube. I've got my light sources, and I'm not entirely happy with the light that's coming in this way. What I want to do is I want to bring it up, bring a bit more down. So I'm just going to move my light. You'll see the difference. And all of a sudden, I've got a bit more light coming down onto the model now. I might do the same. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we can play around with this. Let's turn lights off see what difference it makes. Wow! There you go. So having it coming in from one side gives you a totally different image. Put the other light on. And we've got a bit more light in there now. And then you can do that. Actually, that probably looks pretty good. So you play around with it. Remember, the white gloves, no dust. <laughs> Models look like that. Yeah, they don't look pretty good. Sometimes you want to change the view. So let's bring it down. Let's go for that straight on view. Let's see. As you can see, all that detail is going to come out with the lights. We'll bring the other light in now. And there it is. The shadows are being cast and the model looks pretty good. So we can zoom out. Like I say, sometimes doing these straight on pictures isn't necessarily the best thing. Bring it in at an angle, 
create a bit of a focus point, create a bit of energy into the model. Don't be frightened. Just zoom in on one particular point. So now my model's ready and I'm going to take some photographs and this is actually a relatively straightforward process. But before we do that, what I'll do is I'll show you how to set up a car model. Well here we go, here's this Revel F50 I produced. Wasn't particularly impressed with the model. Um, it wasn't what I would call a great model to build. But as you can see, the lights are reflecting off of it. So let's have a look. Let's play around with the light again. No, nope, don't like that. But I do like that actually. That looks quite nice for this model. So we got the light coming off the front, looks good. But let's have a look. Again, you notice it's at that angle. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my toothpick. I'm gonna to turn the wheels in. I'm also gonna try and make sure that all my wheels are dead upright. There we go. Okay. So I've turned my wheels in. So what I'm not doing is getting a big chunk of tire tread here. Creating a bit more of a focal interest in the model as well. If I move this wheel out here, here we go. It doesn't look as good. Turning it this way a bit, and just rotating that wheel. There we go. Just creates a better picture. So I'm going to take some snaps now, but as you can see, now I haven't dusted this model. As you can see, some of the dust and fingerprints are picking up on it, but it's not too bad. It's good enough. What I want to do is I don't want to do a lot of post processing. One of the worst things to take out in a photograph on Photoshop is dust. So I want to make sure I control the dust in the model and during the shoot. So let's prep, let's take some photographs of the TIE Fighter. Okay, so I'm back again quickly. One of the things that I forgot to mention earlier was about lenses. Da, 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 these things, right. You can see these numbers here. This is meters, feet, infinity. If you look at here, it says 1.1 meters or 4 foot. What that means is that's the minimum distance away from an object you need to be to get a focal, press focal length. And this one, I can be 25 centimeters away. Okay, so just under a foot. So, what we're going to do. Is 250 centimeters. Sorry, so that's the closest I can be to get a sharp image. So what I'm going to do is I want to get some really good close-up images of this Ferrari now. Um, there's some really good de decals on it, and what I'm going to do is move the model to the front of the light box, set the camera up, so I can get these really, really good images. 